Okay, today's rehab session is a tentacle one again. It's on poplar tears. Now, this is very topical because my daughter has this injury, so I'm giving you all the exercises I give her to try and fix it. Now, she has a poplar teal tendinopathy in the muscle, okay? And it sounds pretty rare, but it does happen, and it mostly happens in sprinters. And hey, my daughter's a sprinter. Now, this can happen because of overload, but it's happening in her because she's a little bit unstable in the hip, okay? It doesn't have as much hip control, and so if you look at where your knee is, okay, the main causes of this for her is because when she runs, her knee rolls in, all right? Her foot rolls in, her foot pronates, her knee rolls in. A lot of that is foot control, hypermobility, and hip strength, okay? Now your popliteus is sitting, it comes from this side of your tibia and goes to this side of your femur, okay? It's almost like on diagonal, up like that, okay? Now, it is one of the stabilizers of your knee, okay? So you're gonna need that because what it does, if you look at where it's coming from, it actually does internal rotation of the tibia when you're in a swing phase. So when you're sprinting, it actually rotates your foot inwards, okay? So it does that movement. When you plant it, it pulls the femur outwards. Okay, so it's gonna help sort of stabilize, unlock and lock and stabilize that knee. Okay, little muscle, but if you injure it, so debilitating, especially for people who sprint. So it'll hurt sprinting in the back of the knee, okay? It'll also hurt going down hills. It's like walking down hills it hurts, okay? And usually the pain sits up around here, up around sort of the femoral attachment, okay? Almost feels like a posterior horn meniscal tear, okay? And when you test it, there's a bit of crunching going on, looks like a tear, okay? But it's not, for her, she's 10 years old, it's not a meniscal tear, okay? It's not an ITB thing, it's a popliteal injury. Now, there's four things I've got doing it. The first one is what we call a reverse heel tap. Now, this is directly to try and get that muscle working. We're, gonna, we're after the functions, right? We're after, okay, it does internal rotation, and the non-weight-bearing leg. So, if I, we're talking about my left leg, okay? Say that's my popliteal injury, right? We're gonna go for actually strengthening it up. So, you need a band, like a like a sort of ferro-tubing band like this, that you can put around the forefoot of your foot, okay? So, it's the front part of your foot. Don't put it around the back foot, the mid part of it, it's the front part of the foot, because you're gonna do internal rotation with it. So, I'm gonna go around this way. So, you can hold on to something, and what you do is you go from here, it's like you're gonna tap the floor and you come up into flexion of the knee and internal rotation of the tibia and a little bit of external rotation of the hip, okay? So you think when you go down, it's just the reverse. So this is a little bit tricky because you've got to coordinate this movement. It's not sort of like a normal movement you would do, but it targets that muscle to strengthen it. So you're gonna go bend your knee. As you bend, you rotate your tibia into internal rotation. So therefore your foot, like your toe, is going up that direction. And you can see where the band is, because that band's directly against that movement, I'm gonna strengthen it. So I've got the force directly in line with that muscle and how it's contracting. Okay, that's really important. Now, with my daughter, she can feel that straight away. It isolates that muscle directly. Doesn't injure it, strengthens it. Okay, so she can feel it compared to her other leg. So that movement there, coming up, in, rotate, then you go sort of like half the speed on the way down, let it relax, and go again. Up, rotate, a little bit of external rotation here, okay, because we want to fire the glute up a little bit. Most of the issue is going from there to there. It's that movement as you flex, right? So you've got to think, as, you, as she's running, that movement there we're strengthening up, okay? It's the non-weight being leg movement. That's her first exercise, quite important. She's going to run about sort of, 10 to 12 reps. We don't want to go too much more to fatigue it because we've got to remember with the tendinopathy, you've got to watch your fatigue levels. And she's got to get about three sets done. And I always get to do the other leg as well, okay, to try and feel like what normal is, how to do the movement. Because when you're a little bit weaker, sometimes it's hard to get the actual full movement going if you're not unsure what they actually you're supposed to do. So do the other leg as well. Now, after she's done that, then she needs to work on two things as far as knee and hip stability, all right? Now we're going to sort of break it down to the functions again. We want external rotation of the basically of the femur. We also want some glute control because, listen, one of her reasons why she's getting this is her biomechanics. Her foot, if I take this foot off here, yeah, 
Her foot rolls in like this. Now to complicate things, she's actually got another injury of a tibialis posterior tendinopathy as well. Now that's because, this gets really complicated, but she sprained her ankle and then her ankle basically rolled in for too long and then she developed this. Now, if she crashes her foot in, look what happens to my knee. If you crash your foot in, your knee rolls in, okay? She's already started off with suboptimal hip strength controlling that knee. It was fine until she gets injured in her foot. So if she's crashing in all the time like this, okay, to try and get this knee out before her glute used to do it, okay, but now what's happening is her popliteus is trying to pull the femur outwards on her planted leg. So when she strikes and goes down and crashes, watch this, that popliteus is trying to go, oh, I've got to try and pull that knee out. She strained it. Okay, so sprinting over time, landing, pushing off, landing, pushing off, with a crashed in foot that's more than normal. So more than what she normally had because it's crashing and more because she's developed this pain here, which has made it weak, so she can't even lift her foot up properly. That's crashed in, then she's strained it. So if you're not one of these people who has this problem, you may have a few other things you've got to address about. Don't just think, oh, I've got to just strengthen the pop test and do some heel taps. You've got to think, why has this got injured? So we also go back to, okay, you need your glutes stronger, meaning she needs her hip rotation stronger so she doesn't have to rely on her popliteus to overwork and do all that work to hold out there. Its job is not to pull it out. The job is to stabilize it when it's out there, okay? The hip is to pull it out, okay? And also, we need to work on lifting her arch up and getting a tibialis posterior tendon stronger. So if, you've got one of the, if you're one of those people who's got a tibialis posterior tendon problems, watch the end of this video, because I'm going through stuff for that as well. But let's get back to what she needs to do. She needs to work on doing a stability exercise where she is trying to control what that knee is doing. Okay, so I've given her a single leg deadlift with a lateral band. Okay, this band is trying to do that. I'm going to get her standing on leg, which makes her glutes work, okay, trying to do a deadlift. Now, she can do it with no weight, a little weight. The more weight you use, the, strength, the more strength you're going to get in your hamstring, okay, but just be careful it's not too much for the leg. She's got to stand on one leg and balance, bend the knee a little bit, and try and keep her knee from rolling inwards. So you can see how to do that, I have to use this. I also have to use my foot. So she's not allowed to crash the foot in. She's got to pull that band out, hold it there, and go into what I tell kids is a ballet pose, okay, to there, and come back up. Well, you adults, it's a single leg deadlift, okay? Now, if you put a weight in your hand, that's up to you. But even just doing that movement there, it's not necessarily about the weight, it's about knee control. So I'm trying to keep, okay, that knee needs to stand there. I'm trying to teach that brain, can I use your glutes for once? to pull that knee out so the popliteus doesn't have to do as much work. That'll still be working to stabilize. So this is the beauty about this. You're working on your arch, you're working on your glute, you're not overloading the popliteus, okay? You're training it to stabilize and do its function in that movement, okay, without overloading it. Now people with this injury, you'll be able to do all this pretty much pain-free. They just can't run yet, okay? As soon as they try and sprint, bang, the pain happens because that load's too high. This stuff, should all be pain free. Maybe they feel it a bit like it's working, but not that sharp pain. Then you know you're getting some strengthening done. So that's a really, really important one for her to do. Working on her single leg deadlift, make sure the foot's in the right position at the back, back's flat, the knee doesn't come too far forward, and come back up. For that one, I like having the band a little bit lower down there. Okay, I like that sort of movement. So she's working on getting that knee outwards. Then, number three. So that, that'll get her in, a, in the glute. It won't get her as much as the next one. Now, what I tend to get people to do, if they're a little bit unstable in their foot, to so say she's, you know, she did that exercise without a shoe, this one, I'll get her doing a shoe because it does a lot more demand on the hip, so she need to be super stable with the foot. Okay, so until she gets that really good stability, she really needs to be in a shoe. Now, you can choose to stay in a shoe or not, but for this exercise, I would definitely start with that. You will need, a booty type band like that. It doesn't have to be heavy. In fact, if you go too heavy on this, it'll be too hard, all right? So don't be afraid to go light to start with and then go heavy if you think that's too easy. This one is gonna go above the knees next time because I really wanna target the hip. So we're gonna go above the knee. This is, remember, this is not about 
trying to make the pop test do too much work. The pop test is just working and stabilizing. We're going to try and make this work really hard. Now, normally, to get your glute med and your glute max and trying to get your external rotation strength better, we do a one leg ball squat. We push a ball against the wall. If I push against the wall, say I don't have this bound, if I push against the wall, I'm stable, right? The whole idea about this is trying to be unstable. That'll get my glute. If I do squats like that and push there, that'll get my glute. But I want her to learn stability of the knee, all right? So she needs to be able to, you can start with a little bit of this, but eventually nothing. She needs to be able to stand on one leg, keep this band tension on, like I'm pushing that knee outwards. So I think if I, I'm gonna try and do that, all right? But stand on one leg. Now I've got to focus on my knee, my foot. See how my foot's trying to balance, which is really good for that to be able to post there. Then I go into my squat. Come out of it, keep the tension on the band. The trick about this is balancing, keeping my knees together. Okay? What I don't want to happen is one knee go behind. So it's not like a step down where we go and step backwards like that, because I'm going to lose the tension laterally. Okay, the more tension I have that way, the better I'm going to go here. So I want to keep those knee, two knees together. This will also keep my pelvis level, okay, which is going to make me work really hard in here. This muscle group here is controlling that knee, stopping it do that, which is stopping the injury here. Okay, so keep that band tension on, keep your knees together, keep your knee over your foot, let it come forward as low as you can go, and up again. You've got to try and get at least eight, maybe even up to 12 ribs when you get a bit, bit better of per set, three sets each side. It's a bum burner, okay? It's gonna work really hard here, but it's gonna teach them to try and stabilize. It's gonna get the strength up that she needs in the hip, the strength she needs in the foot to keep her knee from crashing in so she can get back sprinting. Now, the last one, and this is for the people, like I said before, this is people with tibialis posterior tendinopathy. We talked about why she's got it in the first place? She's got it in the first place because she sprained her ankle. All right, she running around and she did a supinational inversion sprain. All right, sprained her ankle here. Sometimes when you get that and you keep running around because you're at school, the body doesn't like going out there because it, it knows you're going to roll. Okay, so if you've got a sprain on this side and it's unstable out there, you are going to tend to not want to go out there. You're going to tend to, the body's going to go, I don't want to do that, I want to go inwards and naturally crashes the foot, okay? And your center of gravity shifts. What that will do is overload that tendon. We've got to build that back up. Now, for her, I don't need to worry about stability on this one. So we can bring that box right close to something she can hold on to. Now, at home, you can just use a piece of wood, okay? So a piece of four by two, something, like, something that's long and stable, put it out on the ground. You don't need a box. It just, we've got a box today. Half the foot, almost, is on the edge. So my big toe and half my heel is sort of off the side of the box. Because I want the ability to let that whole foot collapse into pronation. Okay? And if anything, let the knee roll in. Right? Now, what I've got to try and do is think about, I want to use my tibialis posterior, which is basically attaching around, see that orange sort of line there? It's attaching down there. It's going to lift up my arch. Right. I also want my brain to, as I lift my arch up, to roll my knee back into neutral. And for her, I want her squeezing her bum. Okay, so I want her doing external rotation with an arch lift. And then slowly let the arch drop down and the knee roll in. So she knows what's bad. She tries to aim for neutral. Because guess what? When she runs, that's where I want her. I don't want her landing bang. All right. She's got to train herself to be strong landing on one leg like that. And doing this movement slowly will give her the tendon strength up this tibialis posterior. So you can see how this whole thing is connected. Like with physio, we always try and find the cause of things. You know, why she got this popliteus injury. So if you're one of those people who's got an injury like that, you've got to think about the causes. Okay? If, you know, if it's a sprained neck or that sort of thing, it might just be an isolated problem. But usually there's a biomechanic behind it. And it's probably weakness here and it's probably weakness in the foot that has done it because it's been overloaded. And if it's on one side, why is it that? Is it the jumping leg? Is it the sprinting leg? Regardless, you've got to strengthen it up. Okay, so arch lifts is her final one, and that's going to take care of the whole problem. Now, that's just four things that are 
isolated. I'm saying take care of the problem that's isolating that issue. She's got all these other things she's got to work on. She's got other glute exercises to do that are, you know, there regardless of the injury. Okay, she might do her one leg ball squats. She might do her hip thrusts. She might do some hamstring work. Okay, she's got to get stronger and all the other components that sort of contribute to it. But these are the daily stuff that she can do every single day or at least four times a week until that injury is better, until that walking downhill is better, until she can, we can test it, we can get in there, it doesn't hurt, and then she begins her sprinting and running phase and re sort of conditioning back into a sport. I hope that helps you. See you next time.